Okay, so let's take a look at question 6a here. So this question is a little bit more complicated because there's two things uh, that we need to look at here. Um, the first thing is that we have a different set of numbers that we are plotting our, our values against. Um, usually we use real numbers, which implies that we have a continuous set of points across a line. Okay, in this case here, the I stands for integer. So that means we are only going to restrict ourselves to plotting integers on this graph, which means they are going to just be discrete dots um, on, on, on the grid. We're not plotting values, for example, like 1.5. We are only plotting values like 1 and 2. Okay, and then the other thing is that we also have an inequality here. And what makes this a little bit tricky is because when we end up solving the equation, we'll have to flip one of the, the inequalities around. So there's that added piece there. So let's start by putting this equation into um, something that resembles point slope form, um, because that's still the strategy we want to use. But I'm going to sort of rewrite this a little bit so that we can, we can see it. So I like to bring the y's over to the left side. So we're going to start by writing down negative 7y. Now we're not changing the sign yet, but this the negative 7y is connected with the less than sign. So this means that negative 7y is less than, and we're going to write the 2x um, first and then the 14 last. Okay, so these two equations as, as were, are written are equivalent. Okay, all I've done is flip the y to the left side and put the x's on the right side, but I've kept the inequality the same. Okay, so that's the first step. Second step is we need to divide out the value of negative 7 from every term. Okay, so we can just simply divide that out and write what we get. So this means y is going to become by itself. Those will cancel. This is going to become negative 2 sevenths x. And this is going to become a minus 2 because 14 divided by 7 is 2. But what happened to the inequality? Well, because we divided by a negative number, the inequality gets reversed and it's now going to become a greater than sign because we're dividing by a negative value. So the rule is that you flip the inequality. So this is going to give us um, two values here that we need to look at. We need to know our slope, which is negative 2 over 7. So remember, this is rise over run. Okay, and we know that b is equal to negative 2. So remember, that's our coordinate. This is going to be 0, negative 2. That's going to be our intercept. Okay, and we also need to be aware of that we are using the less than symbol. So if we remember, the less than or greater than, when we don't have the equal sign, then we use a dashed line. That means we're not including the boundary condition. We're, we're, we're less than, but we're not equal to. So we know, we, know, we know where the boundary will be, but we're not going to include it. Okay, and then we also have to take advantage, we also have to understand that we're just plotting integers. So let's just plot this equation, um, first of all, for the line. So we know the intercept is at zero, negative two. So I'm gonna put a dot there. And we know the rise over run is going to be down two and then over seven. So we're going to go down two more units. So that's down to negative four and then over to seven. Okay, so our line, we have two points right there. We can plot our line. And we just have to do it with in a dashed format. So I'm going to just uh, carefully, as straight as I can here, put a dashed line in that runs or connects through those two points. Okay, and then you can just put an arrow on each end of it. Now what we need to also do here is we need to, where, where do we shade the, the value here? So in the previous question, we did a couple of test points, but we can also see here that our final equation here has y greater than. So greater, y being greater than means we should shade the upper region. Okay, so shade the upper region because y is greater than. But we're not really shading every value because remember, we are using integers. 
So integers implies that we can only plot discrete values or points. So the only points that you can actually shade in are the ones that intersect on the graph. So if you look at how I'm plotting them here, it'd be a little, it's a little bit tedious to kind of mark them in, but this is how they show it on, on uh, the, the solution, is that you're only including values at the intersection of where the lines are integers, okay? So you'd have to just take a moment or two just to kind of shade out enough points here to indicate that we're just shading in integer values. Okay, so this should be enough to kind of give anyone uh, an idea that we're just shading all the values here that are above the line because y is greater than, but we're only shading the discrete integer points. Okay, so can't shade anything. We're not supposed to connect the dots or shade anything in between. It's just the integer values. Um, and then also that the line is dashed because we have a less than symbol, not less than or equal to. Or in the, oh, sorry, in this case, I guess we were talking about greater than. I should make that correction here. Greater than. Okay, so we're just going to use the dashed line. So you can, can you could put in more dots or shade them in, or just shade in enough to show that we're looking at a block of values. Um, as you see to see them here, but we're only including discrete points. So we just can only dot discrete points and that R we have a dashed as a boundary line. So that means we're not connecting, um, we're not including points on that line. We're just including all points above this line. Okay, so that's uh, how that question would work out.